In my previous post, I talked about the failures of Lightyear and how it set itself up to fail. Well, I never really like it when people simply condemn something without offering any solutions on how they would have done it better. It's easy to point and scorn, but it's hard to create something magical, especially when it comes to storytelling. With all that in mind, here is how I would have changed Lightyear to make the story better. So keep in mind that whenever I do this, I'm going to try to stay true to the original story as much as possible. The more I remove from the story, then that means I consider those elements to be unredeemable parts of the story. Because Lightyear was all over the place in pacing, I'm going to remove the time dilation stuff entirely. In this version, I'm going to focus much more on Buzz growing to accept help from others, Izzy growing more confident and skilled in her abilities, and Zurich being an actual force of terror to fear. I'm also going to try to make it something that a six-year-old Andy would actually want to see. So let's get started then. The story starts out with the ship landing on a planet. The ship is on a mission to find a planet in this part of the galaxy to set up a strategic base of operations for the Space Rangers in their desperate war against the powerful armies of Zerg. Buzz Lightyear and Commander Burnside have been tasked with leading this mission by General Alicia Hawthorne, a wartime hero and a veteran. When they land, Commander Burnside orders a scouting mission to inspect the planet. He tells Buzz that General Hawthorne has insisted that her granddaughter Izzy gets more field experience. Burnside would like Buzz to take her on the scouting mission, much to Buzz Lightyear's chagrin. He does it though because he respects General Hawthorne since she served with his now deceased father back in the day. As they are out exploring, Izzy expresses her excitement to be working with Buzz and has heard many things about him from her grandma. Buzz tells her that he appreciates it, but he does things better alone and that Izzy needs to make sure to keep up. During this, Buzz is constantly updating his mission log, oblivious to how others may perceive his intensity and his dramatization of the events. Izzy, who clearly admires Buzz, takes note and starts to do her own mission log as well. She tries to create the same intensity, but it's awkward and she isn't nearly as eloquent. Buzz, in all seriousness, tells her to keep trying. One doesn't become a master of the logs without rigorous practice. While they are out exploring, they get attacked by alien plant life. Izzy almost gets dragged down, but Buzz saves her. During the fight, Buzz is amazed at how bad of a shot Izzy is and how bad she is in combat. They get an alert from Commander Burnside that the ship is getting attacked and that they need to get off the planet right away. They rush back to the ship, but Izzy falls down before she can board, and Buzz has to go back and save her. They both get in the ship, and Buzz tells Izzy to seal the bay doors as he runs off to help Commander Burnside with takeoff. Izzy tries to seal the bay doors, but some bug monster jumps in before it closes all the way. She tries to shoot it, but misses terribly, making the bay doors open again. When they try to launch, the bay doors break off, and the ship spirals out of control, and they crash land. So Commander Burnside decides that they should set up base and work on repairing the ship. Once the ship is repaired, they'll take off, and they'll find another planet that they can set up base on. Buzz narrates these events with a mission log, similar to how he does in the movie. But in contrast, we also get Izzy detailing the events on her mission log. In her log, she talks about how she's been placed on janitorial duty for causing this mess. She says that she's going to keep trying, but for now, she's stuck mopping floors. We cut to Zerg's ship, and he receives a message from one of his robot drones who say they lost track of where he went. They say the last time they were able to track him was passing in a specific area in the Delta Sector. Zerg orders scout drones to that sector to go and locate this mysterious person that he is after. After a few months of rebuilding the ship, they are running into issues, but they are very close to finishing. They've regained contact with Star Command, and they've already requested assistance, but Star Command doesn't want to send any more resources to them. Commander Burnside gets furious about this, and contacts General Hawthorne, who says, Sorry Commander, the President and Galactic Congress don't think it'd be worth the resources. I don't agree with them, but my hands are tied. I'm too old and I don't have the same authority I used to have. She instructs them to fix things as best as they can. One day, they lose contact with the mining community and Buzz is assigned to investigate it with a team. He requests to go alone, but the commander insists that he take some people with him. And things only get more frustrating for him when he finds out that General Hawthorne has once again requested that Izzy comes along as a last chance to prove herself, but Buzz says he will absolutely not bring Izzy again. Commander Burnside puts him in contact with General Hawthorne, who once again vouches for Izzy and says she gave Buzz a chance despite his shortcomings and weaknesses. Buzz is surprised by this since he's the best of the best and says, my weaknesses? She explains that Buzz Lightyear's father was just like Buzz, competent but extremely maverick. He did things on his own and this would usually get him into trouble. Despite the trouble, he was always able to find a way out. One time, though, they were doing a rescue mission on the moon where Zerg's army first appeared. 
His father broke his post to save a freight filled with supplies and people. He didn't trust the others to be able to get to them in time, and so he broke his post and he went in alone, despite the commands of his superiors. This time, though, he was outmatched and overwhelmed, and he ended up crashing before he could save the crew and before anyone could save him. Alicia did try to go back to save Buzz's father, but she was forced back with her rescue team from the drone onslaught. A large explosion went off where his father had crash-landed, and she assumed him dead. She says although she had a lot of respect for him as her colleague, his Achilles heel was his overconfidence in his own abilities. She tells him to recognize his own weaknesses and to trust others, despite their shortcomings. Buzz reluctantly agrees to take Izzy again and they head out with a small team to go investigate the mining facility. While they are going, they get attacked by a swarm of bugs, which makes them think the mining colony was overrun by a bug swarm. When they get to the facility though, they find that the colony has been abandoned and there aren't any bugs. Instead, they get attacked by Zerg robots that have overrun the area. They begin fighting with Buzz's team, but one of the robots is able to identify Lightyear. The robots then suddenly retreat back to their three ships to take off into space. Buzz says they need to stop the ships from taking off and they're able to find three rocket launchers to shoot down the ships. Buzz grabs one and tells them to not touch the other two because he will just have to do it himself. He shoots down the first ship while the other two start taking off. Izzy tells him, we won't have enough time, let me take the other one. But Buzz tells her no and grabs the other rocket launcher. As he's aiming, she asks again, Buzz, let me do it, you will not be able to get the third ship. He tells her again, do not touch that third rocket launcher, I will do it. He shoots down the second ship. He grabs the third rocket launcher and starts aiming and fires but the ship takes off at hyperspeed and the rocket misses the target. Buzz puts down his rocket launcher and realizes his mistake. We then cut to Zurg waiting in his ship when the drones arrive with the location data of Lightyear. He informs his drones that it's time to set a course for the planet and his ship takes off at hyperspeed. Meanwhile, we see Buzz Lightyear and his team working on repairing their ship and the communication equipment. But Buzz is still trying to do most of the work by himself because he still does not trust his team. He works hard to get the scanners up, but before he can send any communication to Commander Burnside, a large capital ship shows up on scanners. Izzy says, Buzz, look. When he takes a closer look, he realizes that it's Zerg's personal flagship that is in orbit around the planet. We then cut to Commander Burnside, who also sees the flagship, and he immediately sets up their laser shield. Zerg quickly locates the colony and starts firing on the laser shield with his ship and sends down drones to begin an invasion. The whole team watches helplessly on scanners as the colony gets attacked by an overwhelming force. Buzz realizes that this is all because of him. He thought he could do it by himself and it was even better than his father, but it turns out he was wrong. He apologizes to the team and then specifically to Izzy for not trusting her despite her grandmother's recommendations and counsel. They all ask Buzz, so what are we going to do? And Buzz tells them that they are the colony's last hope. Right now the colony is trapped, but safe behind the laser shield. They work together to set up a plan to have them salvage one of the drone ships that they shot down and to fly it up to Zerg's ship. Once there, they will set up bombs in the ship's engines to shut it down and cause it to crash to the surface. This means the drones will lose their planetary fire support and will give the colony a fighting chance against Zerg's army. So they go to one of the drone ships and immediately start repairing on it, but this time together. It turns out, Izzy, who has been a bit of a klutz, is actually really good at fixing things and is able to get the ship fixed in no time. She mentions how she's had a lot of practice on Zerg drones during her time at the Academy. Buzz asks her what's been holding her back from progressing more in the Space Ranger Corps, and she says, I'm a lousy shot. Buzz gives her a gun and says maybe he can help her a bit. She tries shooting a target he sets up, but she misses by a few meters. He says he's never seen anyone miss that bad, and he has her do a quick eye test by holding her finger out in front of her eyes and closing one at a time. Turns out she is left eye dominant but right handed so he helps her adjust her grip and this time she hits the target. They fly up to the capital ship disguised in the drone transport. Zerg sees this and we see that he's suspicious but he lets them aboard anyways. He looks at the bay cameras and he sees Buzz exit the ship. Zerg stands up and exit the room to go and stop them himself. While they are planting the bombs, Zerg shows up. Buzz tells his team to keep planting the bombs and to finish the mission, and he will fight off Zerg. Although Buzz is talented, he's outmatched by Zerg's technology, and Zerg is able to subdue him. Zerg rips off Buzz's communication device and contacts Buzz's team and tells them, If you blow this ship up, you'll kill Buzz too. He takes Buzz and he throws him into prison. Zerg then asks Buzz if he knows what happened to his father. Buzz tells him he died fighting Star Command's first battle against Zerg's army in a rescue mission. 
Bugs clarifies he died fighting you. Zerg laughs and says, no, Buzz, I am your father. Zerg's suit then opens up, and Buzz's father steps out and says, it's time to undo Star Command's brainwashing. We cut back to Izzy and the others. They think they should stop, but Izzy says, no, we need to finish planting the bombs, and then we'll find Buzz and rescue him before we blow this ship's engines. They keep sneaking around the ship, avoiding the drones, and they plant the remaining bombs. Izzy then hacks into the ship's computers and finds out where Buzz is located. She tries to open his cell, but she realizes that she has to be there to open it. So they run to the cell to get him out. We cut back to Buzz and Zerg. Zerg explains why he is waging this war against the Space Rangers. He says Alicia Hawthorne left him to die on a hostile planet surrounded by hostile drones. Thankfully, his intuition saved him and he was able to get out of the area before the explosion went off that supposedly killed him. For over a year, he wandered the planet, waiting for a rescue mission, but he never got one. He had to hide and feed off the fungus that grew there. Eventually, instead of a rescue from Star Command, he ended up finding the source of the drones, a large underground factory created by another race of aliens. Zerg was able to sneak in, and after a month of trying, he hacked into the source code, and he took control of the drones and started creating his own army. Buzz tries to explain that he was only left because everyone thought he had died, and that they did try to go back to save him. Buzz asks Zerg how he could possibly seek to wage a war against Star Command. Zerg says that while he was starving on that moon, he came to a realization. He realized that it was the politics and the bureaucracy of Star Command that deemed him unworthy to save. He says, think about it, Buzz. If one of the Congress members of Star Command got caught up on that planet, they'd risk the entire Space Ranger Corps to go and save him so that they can continue his useless politicking. But if a Space Ranger like me gets marooned, then it's tough luck. They don't understand what it's like being on the front lines. They're behind the safety of millions of people risking their lives every single day. There needs to be a new order, one without Star Command, and one where they don't abandon their troops. Buzz then challenges him further and tells him, You left your post. Hawthorne told you to stay, but you left your post anyways. This is your fault. Zuri gets angry and says, I had everything under control. If Hawthorne had let me leave my post sooner, I would have made it. Listen to me, Buzz. I know you're just like me. I can see it in your eyes. You and I know that working with others is inefficient. Why bog yourself down with other people? You and I can build a new order, one that is efficient. Buzz then shakes his head slowly. No. You were my hero and my inspiration. You were a legend for everyone in the Space Ranger Corps. The Space Ranger Corps may be hindered by politics, but what you are suggesting is madness and chaos. You just want to be an emperor. Zerg gets in his robot again and says, Well, that's too bad, son. I was really hoping I could change your mind. I guess I'll keep you locked up in here, and once you see how things are run around here, I think you'll have a change of heart. Zerg leaves, and Buzz puts his head in his hands, processing the information he had just learned about his hero and father. Shortly after, Izzy and the team show up to break Buzz out of the prison cell. When Izzy opens the door, though, an alarm goes off. They run back to the hangar to escape on a ship. We cut to Zerg, who hears the alert and orders his drones to find Buzz. Buzz, Izzy, and the team get back to the hangar and jump into the nearest ship. Izzy starts hacking it when Zerg enters the hangar. Buzz leans out of the ship and starts shooting at Zerg when Zerg grabs him with his claw. Buzz grabs the edge of the ship and his team grabs him as well to keep him from getting pulled in. He struggles for a moment, but then a laser blast breaks Zerg's chain and we see Izzy is the one who made the shot. They barely escape and set off a bomb destroying the capital ship. As they are flying down into the atmosphere, Zerg appears again and grabs the ship, breaking the engine so they cannot slow down. Buzz grabs a jump pack and jumps out and him and Zerg have an actual epic space battle on the ship. He knocks Zerg away and blows him up by targeting an exposed fuel cell in his suit. He gets back in the ship and they again work as a team to land the ship. Everything plays out the same with the team being awarded for heroism and going on special missions as an elite squad. In an alternate reality where I am in charge of Pixar, I also would have shown a clip of Zerg surviving the explosion, setting up future conflicts between him and Buzz. So anyways, I hope you enjoy how I would have changed the Lightyear story. There are obviously a ton of details that I would need to add, but I hope you got the gist for how I would have made this story better.